Well, welcome to the November show of Women on the Frontline International Fellowship. I am your host, Dr. Sonia Stenson, and I am so glad to be coming into your home through internet, through live TV, through smart TV, however you're getting us, even in the car. Uh, it is just a blessing to be here today in this November show, and we have a very exciting show for you today and this whole month. We're going to be talking about family. And one thing I wanted to focus on family because we're in the month of November and December and which we're getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas. And those are huge family months for individuals. But the reality is, is that some of us are still struggling. And today I have in the studio some wonderful, awesome men and women of God who I've known for a long time. But they have a new book that I fell in my lap, and I'm just so happy to be one of the first to interview them as this particular book comes out next week. And so the book is entitled Shattered, How to Overcome a Broken Marriage. And so before I go any further, I want to introduce you to Joel and Naomi Mitchell. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you all doing? It is a pleasure to be with you. Naomi, um, I had you my first year on the show, yes, and as we were dialoguing be be before mm -hmm. the show, it has been four years. Yes. And you, along with some of the other women, as I began to feel my way with the show, um, we did mostly women, but now we're doing both women and men. Amen. And so I'm so glad today to have your husband yes. to join you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. And it's so great to be you back. have written this awesome book mm -hmm. called Shattered. Um, and, you know, one of the first things I want to talk about is both of you. OK, mm -hmm. so um, tell us a little bit about both of you and how um, ministry has helped you and helped the marriage. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's actually been a blessing um, when I met Joel. Um, I was not in ministry. Mm -hmm. I have since the call, I was, well, not, let me say, not in the preaching ministry. I have been in the church all of my life and have been serving in many capacities. However, I sensed the call of God to preach uh, and to pastor on my life early on, but uh, I was at a conservative Baptist church where women were not uh, permitted to, to pastor or to preach mm -hmm. at that time. So mm -hmm. Joel uh, actually came to the church a little bit later uh, and realized his call, but he also sensed my call. And that kind of drew us in together as friends. Uh, and so that's how our relationship developed. Uh, God showed him the call on my life and we began to discuss it because I had, had not mentioned it to anyone else at that point. Good. And so uh, the friendship developed in that way. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's wonderful. And Joe, how long have you all been in ministry? So actually, uh, been in ministry now since 2002. So it's been about 15 years where mm -hmm. I was first uh, licensed to preach. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was in 2002. In 2010, I was ordained. Okay. And so through that whole process of going to seminary, I uh, received my Master of Theological Studies uh, and my Master of Divinity from McCormick Theological Seminary, and now I'm pursuing my uh, doctor, doctors, of, right. yeah. doctor of Ministry at mm -hmm. Chicago Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. and so it's been a journey for both of us mm -hmm. as we've both uh, been in ministry, been in school, Naomi's also mm -hmm. a seminarian mm -hmm. in her mm -hmm. own right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. graduate mm -hmm. of Garrett Evangelical mm -hmm. Seminary as well, where she received her Master of Divinity and Master of Pastoral Care and mm -hmm. Counseling, mm -hmm. and is also a doctoral uh, doctor Candid of ministry yeah. candidate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So both of you balancing. And Joel, I met you in school, although we had been in our parachurch ministry, we had been connected, but not really knowing exactly how we were connected. And so we were at McCormick together. He came out, yes. then he went back, and, and now you're doing your doctor's degree. Well, I am just delighted. I want to get to this book, and uh, today <laughs> <coughs> we're going to have a good show. All, all of November, we're going to talk about shattered. And so, one of the first things I discovered in, in this book that we talked about is that you had a large wedding, and you had twins <laughs> <laughs> at 38 years old. Yes. And that sort of shattered the honeymoon part <laughs> because 
my understanding is you have been trying to have children and things like that, and mm -hmm. then at 38 years old, you come up with twins. Mm -hmm. And that sort of, as Joel uh, puts in this book, shifted yes. you all's marriage. Because now, as you put in the book that instead of going home with one, you had to go two, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> double. Absolutely. And so then in that particular um, era that you were in, in that particular stage of your marriage, you said there were some warning signs because now you had to balance motherhood, mm -hmm. wifehood, mm -hmm. and school. Yeah. So you talk about the warning signs of breaking down communication, breakdown in trust, breakdown in intimacy. Joel, I wanted you to talk about those warning signs and, and, and what you, know, you talk about in this book. Great. Well, um, Sonia, we came up with the, the whole premise of Shattered uh, using a very uh, simple analogy that people can pretty much relate to. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, if you take, for example, you're driving down the street, mm -hmm. and then uh, a rock or a pebble or something hits your windshield. Mm -hmm. And now you know if that rock hits your windshield and you keep driving and you don't tend to it, then that small crack can begin to spread across yes. the windshield. It'll, you know, take over the windshield. And if you don't do anything to resolve it or to address it, to fix it, your whole windshield can become shattered. Wow. And so that's really the whole premise of this book. And so when we were uh, praying about the book and mm -hmm. coming up with thoughts and ideas about the book based around this analogy, we said, well, what are some of those kind of warning signs? What are some of those small cracks that mm. will come into your marriage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that if not if they aren't addressed mm -hmm. then it can shatter your marriage just mm -hmm. like the windshield mm -hmm. and so we like to talk about the big three we understand that there are many you know issues that may challenge a marriage however we just wanted to for the sake of this text mm -hmm. focus on the what we call the big three mm -hmm. and that is a breakdown in communication mm -hmm. breakdown in trust mm -hmm and break down in intimacy. Mm -hmm. and, and this book is so biblically based mm -hmm. because it's not just a book that you wrote, but you also connect scriptures with everything when you talk about the, the big three and you talk about trust, communication, and intimacy. You talk a lot in this book about trust, mm -hmm. that it begins with trust mm -hmm. and retrusting again. The other thing that you talk about in this book is forgiveness, yes. that somebody has to be big enough to forgive. So, Joe, when you broke down, and Naomi, either one of you can answer mm -hmm. the, the warning signs, when we say break down and trust, can both of you talk about, well, let me give you an example. You talked about in this book, you gave, um, I don't know if these are real character names, but I'm going to talk about Marcus, and um, there was Marcus and um, and, and, and Evelyn, mm -hmm. okay? And, and Marcus and Evelyn, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, met, and um, then there was a um, loss of job or something of that nature, and um, then there was a loss of trust. Can you all talk about, this is the first chapter, there's five chapters in this book, and we're probably <laughs> going to cover all of them. Can mm -hmm. you all talk about that? Marcus and Evelyn, what, how, what, the, what is the Marcus and Evelyn um, um, connection to everyone's marriage mm -hmm. when something has happened? Chef? Either one of you can answer that. Yeah, so um, in the story of Marcus and Evelyn, so what we did when we created these um, these uh, what we call uh, little uh, short stories, mm -hmm. you know, because it's important. Everyone has a story, mm -hmm. and our lives consist of our our narratives, mm -hmm. you know. And so their narrative is like a little vignette, mm -hmm. and uh, and we talk about their story because it's a composite of couples that we've seen over the years. So they're fictitious characters. Mm -hmm. They're not, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. any of our clients but just the issues that we cover in the relationship mm -hmm. is common mm -hmm. and so in in Evelyn and Marcus's mm -hmm. case um, they had an issue with fidelity mm -hmm. uh, infidelity mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so Marcus actually came home and uh, told Evelyn that he had had an affair mm -hmm. and so infidelity is one of the number one reasons why couples relationships are shattered mm -hmm. and we wanted to cover that because fidelity is vitally important to us mm -hmm. because fidelity in faithfulness is what what it takes to make a good relationship okay but people's relationship are shattered when infidelity occurs in the in the marriage and you talk about how a little bit and you didn't get deep mm -hmm. but infidelity how does infidelity sneak into 
a marriage, mm -hmm. such as with Evelyn, uh, Marcus and Evelyn. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we look at infidelity as creeping in is that, first of all, and as you mentioned, uh, the book is very scripturally based. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, as ministers, we do know that as hard as we try, there is an enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that enemy has a job description. Mm -hmm. And his job description is to steal, steal kill, kill, and destroy. And destroy. That's yeah. his job description. That's right. That's, that's and so true. he's mm -hmm. on his job every day. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't take a he doesn't take a break. Mm -hmm. Doesn't take a nap. Mm -hmm. And so we understand that the enemy will sneak in through temptation. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes, if the couple, if they're not connecting if they're not communicating, mm -hmm. if they're not, you know, praying together. And even if they do do those things, sometimes the enemy can creep in through temptation. But we call infidelity one of those cracks because if it is not addressed soon mm -hmm. in the marriage, then it can cause it to shatter. Uh, we talk about the fact that even in Naomi and I, in our experience and in our marriage, you know, we're in tune with one another. Mm -hmm. And Naomi generally understands and knows when something is going on with me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not being open and honest mm -hmm. and and, um, and trustworthy to communicate with Naomi, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that's that just leaves room for the enemy to creep in. And, and creeping, so with that... And, and creeping in means that you leave Naomi or Evelyn is left vulnerable. Right. Or Marcus is left vulnerable mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and feel the need because God gives us human needs and yeah. we have human natures That's and so right. I like what you said that I, 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 I can feel Naomi I know when something's wrong mm -hmm. and vice versa is that important in a relationship that prevents shattered marriage can well, you answer that? Mm -hmm. Well, part of that um, is uh, where we talk about communication mm -hmm. uh, if we're not communicating our needs if we're not talking, you know, then certainly uh, that can can be a cause a rift. That's mm -hmm. that's actually the warning sign. That's the breakdown. Mm -hmm. So if there's no communication, then certainly you're talking to someone. Mm -hmm. And so conversation is one of those uh, areas where uh, it's if it. it um, intimacy develops mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so if you're having a conversation you develop intimacy and so if you're not talking with your spouse and you're talking to someone else say for instance having a water cooler conversation at work which was uh, Marcus's Marcus issue, issue right. uh -huh, because he had an affair with the woman from work mm -hmm. he probably was talking more to her than he was to his wife mm -hmm. and typically when you have conversations and when you begin to get intimate and talk about the private issues of your life with someone other than your spouse then you open the door for um, both of you all to be um, ambushed uh, by something like infidelity. You know, before you know it, you know, you hear people all the time, all the time saying, "I mean, I just don't know. It ha it just happened." You know, well, actually, it didn't happen. If you go back and look, you'll see where you know there was a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was conversation, mm -hmm. and then you begin to talk about the the uh, things in your life. You know, conversation. conversation. And that's so important because, as Naomi just stated, uh, we always think about the, the physical cheating. Yes. The right. physical sexual act of cheating. Mm -hmm. But there are so many emotional affairs that Talk take place. Talk a little bit about that because Marcus did go through some emotional issues. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um. it's, yeah, and it's one of those things that if you're not communicating with your wife and then you have the water cooler conversation, because really in Marcus's case, he was looking for some more attention. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. You know, and so therefore he wasn't feeling as though he was getting the attention that he was craving at home. Mm -hmm. But instead of having that discussion with his wife mm -hmm. about what his needs were, he started having those discussions in the water cooler conversation. And, you know, even in the story, it talks about, you know, he's a middle aged guy and, you know, he didn't even think he would be attractive mm -hmm. to women even at this stage in his life. But mm -hmm. now he oh, has but what a this trap. person mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. right. and showing him some attention. Oh, but what a trap, yes. Having conversations mm -hmm. with him. And then even the scripture talks about temptation. You'll be led down a path, mm -hmm. and the end of that path is destruction. Yeah. Absolutely. We're talking about today um, an all month long shattered, how to overcome a broken marriage. And we have in our studio. Joel and uh, um, Naomi Mitchell, an awesome couple. This book is being re has been released, but they're gonna have a huge um, book signing 
on the 11th, I believe. And I'm mm -hmm. encouraging all those that are married, if you're going through some issues, if you're going through some troubles, or if you just want to strengthen your marriage, you need to purchase this book. And as we go on late in the show, they will tell you how to purchase it. Let's get back to some discussion, yes. okay? okay. Um, the discussion that I want to go to is then you talk about back to the source. Mm. Yes. Yes. Reconciling with God. But one thing you end um, with in chapter one, you talk about the secret to healing your marriage begins with you, mm -hmm. who was created mm -hmm. in God's image. Yes. And so uh, it was very powerful how um, God had given Naomi the the whole scripture found in Corinthians about uh, being reconciled back to God. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that in every marriage, it's just not the husband and wife, but it is a, as scripture lets us know, marriage is a threefold cord. Yes. It's between the husband, the wife, and God. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we know that when we are lacking as husband and wife, we always have, uh, thank God for Jesus, the mm -hmm. ability mm -hmm. to look back to God uh, who is our source mm -hmm. and who is our strength. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes in the book, you'll, you'll discover that we talk about when there are challenges in our relationships, oftentimes we're so quick to try to fix the relationship or fix one another, when actually it may be a time for us to sit back and reflect and see how we need to get back in connection Alignment. with God, yeah. and how we get back aligned with God. And you talk a lot about that in chapter two, when you yeah. talk about reconciliation, you talk about after the trust is gone. Uh, you gave some really awesome nuggets about after the trust is gone, mm -hmm. how to rebuild that trust. And also, uh, I'm going to read, you said it might be uncomfortable to um, shift through the sift through the rubble mm -hmm. to see that your marriage wasn't as strong as you thought it was. Mm -hmm. But the only way out is through. Yes. You have to go through the damage in order to fix it. Yeah. You talk yeah. about that in reconciliation and, you know, finding your way back or getting back to God. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a, a lot of, there were powerful, a lot of powerful statements in here. I could feel the anointing in this mm, book. Praise God. Um, so when you talk about after the trust is gone, um, and, and in chapter two, I believe we're talking about David and, um, was it David and Pam? Mm -hmm. And David and Pam, um, David, um, they met and doing um, work and, and Pam had a daughter and, mm -hmm. and he took attention to it and mm -hmm. the bottom fell out mm -hmm. when he lost his job mm -hmm. and it was okay for six or seven months when Pam thought she could have it but then the bottom fell out again because as you know in real society why this book is so real mm -hmm. it may take a year yeah. to get back up if not more, but yeah. if not more mm -hmm. especially when you've had a successful job and the downsides and whatever happened to David and Pam yes. but Pam in my as I read through this book began to get frustrated yes. okay mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, she just after a while it was just no I don't want this so mm -hmm. you know let's talk about chapter two yeah and I think um, in that instance the frustration um, with Pam it was because uh, he was not uh, David was not honest with her mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. when he could no longer handle mm -hmm. the finances and mm -hmm. found out that um, you know that thing, the ends were not meeting and then they received an eviction notice mm -hmm. um, you know then that became a, a you know a real issue for them um, and then she being the um, sole breadwinner mm -hmm. where they had all you know started with two incomes and then they were down to one income that mm -hmm. requires some ad major adjustments mm -hmm. you know which of course impact the family mm -hmm. uh, because you're used to one way of living and so now there has to be some major sacrifices mm -hmm. uh, and then without you know by it going on for so long you know then that of course increases the frustration uh, also uh, you know when um, they went out to dinner. David, you know, wanted to treat his wife to dinner, and all she could see was that we're not making ends ends meet, and how can we afford to go to dinner? And I mean, that story was really real, right? Because it's you know, you worry, you have, you're anxious mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. survival, mm -hmm. and particularly when you're used to living one way. Uh, mm -hmm. But when what we talk about is financial infidelity, mm -hmm. when we talk about Joe was mentioning that there are you know many other ways. 
of where infidelity occurs. It's not just, you know, sexual infidelity, um, but there's spiritual infidelity, there's financial infidelity, emotional infidelity. In this case, it was financial infidelity, and he was not being honest about their finance. And, 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 mm -hmm. and real life. Yeah. This is real life. Absolutely. This is happening today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, um, you know, and, and so my question in that chapter is, do you think that, you know, um, Davis' um, financial infidelity could have been avoided if he just had a communicated yes. that things, again, those three, communication, mm -hmm. if those, if he had a communicated. So back to you, Joe, is, was it a macho thing? Was it a man thing? I mean, what was it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the, and the reason why we love, you know, being able to share the stories mm -hmm. is because people can gravitate to them mm -hmm. and people can oftentimes see themselves in the story without having to necessarily raise their hand in public and say this is me mm -hmm. but i can relate to him because especially in the church you know men we are always saying mm -hmm. you are the priest mm -hmm. you are the provider you are the protector and so you know that's a pretty hefty you know responsibility <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have to live up to mm -hmm. and so and those are the you know things that we learn in the church and i can only speak from my own example my own experience you know, as men, we want to do that. Okay. We want to live up to that expectation. Mm -hmm. We want to be the priest, protector, and the provider. Mm -hmm. But then when things happen in real life, because we do lose jobs, we do get downsized, and then we are oftentimes finding ourselves, you know, on the couch, and he's playing a video game, mm -hmm. but when rea in reality, he's probably depressed and not oh. feeling you know himself because he's not able to live up to that expectation wow mm -hmm. and so yes i believe that there's some pride that takes you know shape and form in there but also it gives men an opportunity to say hey you know and this is the one thing i love about naomi that we always talk about you know we understand what my role is not only in the home but even outside of the home at work you know, so as men, sometimes we feel like we have to be Superman. Mm -hmm. We have to feel like we got it all together mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I'm so grateful uh, about Naomi is when I always tell the story is that when I come home, she allows me to be Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> she allows me to take off the cape. Good. She allows me to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, men, we don't feel as though there's a space for us to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think had David felt the space maybe or took the risk mm -hmm. you know to to believe that his wife would have been there for him mm -hmm. and that he could have been real with her and he could have been transparent with her mm -hmm. then maybe he would have communicated yeah you talk what about is, that transparency what mm -hmm. his emotions are yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i love the way you say i love naomi she gives me a chance to be Superman, she gives me a chance to be take off a clock clean hat, and and that's so needed. Mm -hmm. um, and and the reality is is that many marriages are shattered in the church, and you know and forgive me if I say this, but first ladies are sitting on the pulpit and they're miserable because their their husbands are not the same as they are in the pulpit and so they're two public faces that mm -hmm. they put on mm -hmm. and that's just not for men because let's face it women are pastors too mm -hmm. they're two public faces so men i'm not beating up on you today mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they're two public faces in the pulpit and at home mm -hmm. which they shouldn't be because that's not god's way mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but they should see the same thing in the church as they see outside of the church mm -hmm. and joe to your point um your wife have to allow you to be who you are and I feel that they have to give you space to be Clark Clint and Superman. Yeah. Okay. At the same time, he was two people in one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we talk about that uh, individuality, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we oftentimes use the, the example or the symbolism in marriage. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes when we marry couples, you know, they have the beautiful unity candle mm -hmm. and the groom's family will come up and light his candle. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, bride's family will come up and light her candle. Yeah, she taught us mm -hmm. that. And then, you know, when you come together, mm -hmm. you, you know, light the unity candle. But then those, the husband and wife, the bride and groom, they will then blow out mm -hmm. their individual candles. Mm -hmm. But we've learned, you know, down through the years that 
couples and individuals, they need to keep that light burning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we don't want to be all consumed with the marriage. Because there are still some individual needs that we have, Mm -hmm. you know, and so I respect what Naomi's needs are. If she's in school, if she's working, if she's doing, you know, so I should be there and be supportive of Naomi in those instances because I didn't marry and don't want to be married to another Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, I love her for who she is Mm -hmm. and all of the Mm -hmm. gifts and talents that she brings Mm -hmm. to the relationship and vice versa. Yeah, and Naomi talked about that at a recent event that her and I were at and how, you know, we, uh, you know, in a few minutes, we can lose ourselves um, into who we are. And that's not what marriage is all about. Um, It's not about that. And so we have a few minutes left in this part one of this show, Shattered, How to Overcome a Broken Marriage. And uh, in the few minutes left, two minutes, I'm going to give both of them an opportunity to talk into the camera Mm -hmm. and tell them how to get in touch with you and definitely uh, uh, talk about the event, the excitement about this book. Uh, we have about maybe two minutes left. Can uh-huh. you are talking to those cameras, invite the audience to your um, book opening and all of the things that you're going to be doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And so we um, actually are having our book launch and book signing on November the 11th. Uh, November the 11th at Third Baptist Church of Chicago. It's located at 1551 West 95th Street. We are so excited that we finally get to share uh, this gift that God has given us with you all. And so please, you can also purchase the book uh, uh, on our website at www.themarriageinvestors.com. You can actually buy... um, your uh, or buy your your book or come to the book launch or buy your ticket to the book launch is what I'm saying um, on Eventbrite. You can look for us at themarriageinvestors.com. We're on Twitter at themarriageinvestors.com, Facebook and Instagram at themarriageinvestors.com. And Joel, tell them why it's important for both men and women to come and um, to this to this and read this book together. That's what we're going to talk in our next segment. Should they read this book together? Uh, We believe that, you know, couples should read this book together. Uh, We're so excited because we do uh, couples coaching and consulting together. And how those people get in touch with you about that? Mm -hmm. And so that you can hear both voices, Mm -hmm. both from the male and female perspective. And so you can get in contact with us at our website, www.themarriageinvestors.com. And so, yes, we encourage both men and women to come out to share and to join in with us. Uh, We believe it'll be a blessing, not only if your marriage is experiencing challenges, but we also use this book if you want to shatter proof your marriage. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn what some of those uh, cracks in the windshield are Mm -hmm. so that you can uh, identify them and then address them before your marriage becomes shattered. Mm -hmm. So we believe this book has something for everyone, for those who are engaged, seeking to be married, Mm -hmm. those who are married but are in a good place. We believe that the enemy of great is good. So Mm -hmm. if you're in a good Mm -hmm. place, there's always room for greater. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you are experiencing challenges in your marriage, we wrote this book with you in mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. And so I, you know, um, I am Dr. Sonia Stinson with Women on the Front Line International Fellowship. Listen, we're coming back uh, with part two of Shattered, um, How to Overcome a Broken Marriage. But let me encourage you that on November 11th, Third Baptist is, what's the location of Third Baptist? Could you please give us that? Yes, 1551 West 95th mm-hmm. Street, uh, conveniently located on the corner of 95th and Ashland, mm-hmm. where our pastor is the Reverend, uh, Dr. Reverend Allen V. Raglan. So please come on out conveniently located right on the corner of 95th and Ashland. Mm-hmm. And so you've heard part one of the marriage investors from Joel and Naomi uh, Mitchell. I uh, have been connected with them. I'm so happy. Again, this is an awesome book. You want to get it. Um, go to Amazon and to all of the book outlets that you can get it. If not, you can meet them, meet them in person. If you're looking for counselors, pre-engagement, engagement, I encourage you to do so. I am a Dr. Sonia Stenson with Women on the Front Line, Victory and Grace Christian Church, and I invite you on December 2nd to our year-end launching. It's going to be held at the New Haven Church at 4313 South 
um, Indiana. Our theme as we close out the year is moving forward. You can reach me at www.sonyastensonministries.com. I am delighted to hear from you. I can be reached at 1-866-936-7880. Again, until next week, as we go into part two of Shattered, How to Overcome a Shattered Marriage. I'll see you next week. God bless you.